In this video, I'm going to make a simple teleprompter that attaches to a camera lens filter thread. And because most people who want teleprompters probably don't have a workshop full of tools and machines like I do, I'm going to make it using some basic hand tools. To make this, you'll need a smartphone with a teleprompter app, and I'll talk more about the app later in the video. Some thin plywood, the stuff I have here is 1 8 inch thick, which is just over 3 millimeters. You could also use something like hardboard, which is readily available in most DIY shops instead. A handsaw, a drill, a tape measure, a hot glue gun, a speed square, or one of those triangular ruler things that you get from a stationary set. Some black spray paint, I got mine from a pound shop. A small piece of glass, I'm using the glass from a small picture frame. I picked up two of these picture frames for a pound from a pound shop too. A hole saw drill bit that's the same size as your camera lens and a filter adapter for the camera lens that you want to use which looks a bit like this and I'll talk some more about that later in the video too. I'll include some useful links to the things you'll need in the description box below. Some of you might remember about eight months ago I made my first teleprompter. I have a video about that on my channel, link to that in the description box below. It worked well but it was quite big so then I made a smaller version and that's this one here which I've been using ever since. But last week that one fell off my workbench and the glass smashed. I started thinking about how I could improve the design and the first problem I wanted to solve is that the original one needs a second tripod to be set up in front of the camera. That can take a lot of time to set up and get right, especially if you want an unusual camera angle or if you're working in a tight space. First I want to cut a back panel, a top panel and a bottom panel and all of those panels will be the same size, 170mm by 100mm. I'm using 170mm in length because I want the box to be long enough to accommodate the length of my phone and also the length of the glass that will later be added to the inside. And I'm using 100mm in height because I need the box to be a little taller than the piece of glass when it's held at a 45 degree angle. And that measures about 7cm. If you want to make one of these and you're using a different size phone to me, or different thickness of material, you can adjust the dimensions that I'm using to make your own. Here I'm marking up the length for the back panel onto the plywood, and then I square off that line with my speed square. And then I do the same to mark up the width. I use the handsaw to make the cuts and this ply is so thin that it cuts really quickly and easily. These cuts don't need to be super accurate as we're going to be using hot glue to stick everything together and that will help to fill any gaps. I label each panel and then I can work on the top and bottom panels which are exactly the same size so I measure and mark those up and cut them in the same way. Now I have a back, a top and a bottom panel, all of which are the same size. Next I want to make the side panels and to do that first I'm going to position the panels that I've already cut and measure the space between them. My side panels need to be 94mm in width and I already know the other dimension which is 100mm because that's the depth measurement used on the top and bottom panels. So then I can measure and mark up those panels too and cut them to size. Next I'm going to mark up the hole for the camera lens in the back panel. I found the centre of it by holding a straight edge from corner to corner and drawing a cross. Then I can centre the filter thread adapter to the cross just by eye and draw around the inside. This is the material that needs to be removed and for that I'm using a 54mm hole saw. The hole saw comes with a pilot bit which will help to guide it straight. Mine just needs tightening with a spanner and then it's good to go and then I can drill out the hole. Time for assembly now and I'm going to use hot glue to stick the panels together. I'm holding up the side panels here just as a reference to make sure that the top and bottom panels will be positioned at 90 degrees to the back panel. The hot glue sets really quick so no need to use any clamps. Just hold it for a few seconds and it'll set fine. Then I check that the side panels fit okay without glue, which they do, and I can glue those in place too.
To add a bit more strength to the inside of the box, I run a bead of hot glue down all of the seams. Apologies for the poor camera angle here, which mainly just shows how many grey hairs I have. Next I offer up my speed square to the inside of the side panels and mark up a 45 degree angle. And here's another poor camera angle, sorry about that. I'm going to use a couple of small blocks of MDF now, but if you don't have anything like this laying around, you could just glue together a few small bits of whatever material you're using to get the thickness that you need. I add hot glue to the blocks and then I stick them inside level with the inside of the line on both side panels. And these blocks are going to be what the glass mounts onto, as you can see here. So the glass I'm using is not the best quality, it's just glass from a very, very cheap picture frame and it's very thin, but that's actually a positive thing. The thinner the glass, the clearer the text reflection on the glass will be. If you use thicker glass, you tend to get some ghosting of the text, which makes it difficult to read. So the thinner the glass, the better. I'm going to use some black spray paint to paint the inside of the box. This will make the words that will later be reflecting on the glass much easier to read and then I can leave the paint to dry. Next I want to add the filter adapter. I actually already had one of these and found it in a drawer and that's what actually gave me the idea to make this project. But if you don't have one, check the thread size on your camera lens. Usually it will be written on the inside of your lens cap and then search for whatever size it is. So for example, if it's 52 millimeters, put into Google 52 millimeter filter adapter and you should find what you need. I will include some links below though, which will help. First, I attach the filter thread adapter to the front of my camera lens, screwing it on all of the way, and then I add a bit of tape as a marker for where the top of the camera lens is when it's fully screwed on there. I then unscrew it, and I can line up the bit of tape with what will be the top of the hole on the back panel, and I can hot glue that in place. I also add a bead of hot glue around the edge of that too, just to make sure that it's held firmly. I can then give the glass a bit of a clean, ready for it to be fitted. And I use hot glue again to stick that in place onto the mounting blocks. I then add a generous bead of hot glue onto the top of the glass to secure it in place to the side panels. And then I can add the teleprompter onto the front of my camera lens, and that's it done. I took mine one step further though. I cleaned up the edges flush at the belt sander. This part isn't necessary, I'm just doing it mainly because I want it to look good in the thumbnail of this video. And then I applied a coat of my homemade oil wax finish, which is available to buy on my Etsy store. Link to that in the description box below. This teleprompter works great. It's so nice just to be able to screw it onto the lens, put my phone in there and start recording without needing to set up an extra tripod each time. One other thing to note is that the lens I'm using is a zoom lens and when it's set to its widest focal length, which on this lens is 18 millimeters, the corner of the teleprompter start to appear. But that's not a problem for me. I just zoom in a little bit to around 20, 22 millimeters and then it disappears. I don't often film myself talking at 18 millimeters anyway, so no big deal. The teleprompter app that I use at the moment is Teleprompter Premium. It does cost a bit of money, I think it was around 10 pounds, but you can get lots and lots of other free teleprompter apps too, like Parrot Teleprompter, for example. Look around and find the one that works best for you. But the reason I bought Teleprompter Premium is because it works really well with my Bluetooth remote control so that I can speed up or slow down the text while I'm filming. I'll leave a link to this below in the description box too. That's it for this one. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more weekly woodworking videos. I hope you found this useful. If you want to help to support the channel on Patreon and get early access to my videos, exclusive content, free project plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of my videos, you'll find a link to that below in the description box. Thank you for watching.